Are you someone who is living on a fixed income or a low income and you want to travel? Or have you found that your finances don't exactly allow you to travel the way you used to? Well, you're in the right place because in this video, I'm going to share with you a few strategies that my husband and I used to start preparing ourselves for travel when our income was limited. You might be thinking, why should I listen to you? Like, what proof do I have? We'll go ahead and take a look at this. Falling leaves, autumn breeze reminds me of when I was 17. We would walk by the frozen creek, exchanging books and more secrets. So now you're probably wondering, okay, you've traveled a little bit. What do you have to say that can, that every other guru hasn't said before, right? Well, I have specific strategies for people who are on fixed and low income because at one time we had a very fixed income. Even though I had a job, I didn't make overtime. Um, my husband didn't make overtime with his job. So what we had coming in every month was what we had coming in. And we had to figure out a way to um, be able to plan and research. And that's going to be the number one key to you being able to travel anywhere you want to. So what I'm going to do is go through three major things before you ever book. Well, actually a couple before you book, but when you're booking that you need to look for when you're trying to travel on your fixed or lower income. So the first part of our strategy is to set your priorities. And when I say set your priorities, I mean sit down and really discuss what is most important to you when you travel. Will you be willing to save a little bit of money on food in order to stay at a four-star hotel? Or do you want to have the full luxurious experience? Now I'm going to be honest with you. Some people might not be honest with you, but I'm going to tell you, if you haven't traveled before and you're on a limited or fixed income, then don't expect to be able to bust out and be at a five-star five star hotel and have a five-star meal every night at that five-star hotel that you stay at. That's quite a lot of money. It does take some planning and some a good amount of saving, actually, or good credit, really good credit. Um, and even with that, you know, you might not be able to do it. So have realistic expectations. Let me give you just a little snippet of our first trip. So my husband and I, our first trip was to go see family in another city that's about 10 hours away from where we live. It wasn't a major trip for either one of us, but it was our first trip as a married couple. And so um, we did not set that priority. We kind of just jumped out there and went. And well, let me tell you, it went pretty terrible. Um, we haven't always been the best at planning. And so a lot of this is through trial and error. But when I say set priorities, we decided that we were willing to save money by staying at a cheaper hotel and spend more money in the city doing activities with the family, which is great. You know, you want to spend time with your family. You want to enjoy your trip, right? But not to the detriment of where you lay your head. So I am not going to say the name of the hotel chain, but let's suffice it to say that it was on the lower end. It was in a very sketchy part of town and it was far away from where we needed to be. So the money that we saved on the hotel, the saved on the hotel room, we ended up spending in gas, trying to get back and forth to the activities. And I didn't feel safe. So that's one thing. So setting your priorities and knowing where you will be willing to honestly be willing to sacrifice. For instance, when we travel to Vegas, we stay, we use our Vegas, my Vegas points to help save money. Excuse my voice. But we also decide where we're going to eat ahead of time. Like, are we going to have a trip where we're spending a lot of money at buffets or are we just going to eat like at fast food restaurants and, you know, um, cheap affair. So now moving on to number two. Now, once you've set your priorities, then number two will be easier. And then number three will be easier. We're building to something. So the second thing that we do is that we take a look at our frivolous spending. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We did. We sat down and we looked and we saw what we were spending money on. And let me tell you, at the time, it was just me and him and I was pregnant and I wasn't eating that much. But 
we were spending a lot of money eating out because we were not planning meals. And so what we did was we added up the money that we were not, um, that we were spending like just haphazardly going to, it, it came out to a decent amount of money. And we decided, okay, instead of eating out this often, what we're going to do is this. This is the dollar amount that we are frivolously spending. So we are going to take that money and split it in half, however much it is a week, split it in half. Well, actually, we did it in three quarters. So a quarter of it we kept, and then three quarters of it we put onto a prepaid card. And I'll come to that in a moment. That is very key in part in part of the strategy. If you, especially if you have a hard time saving up, it's very key. So what we would do is um, put the money into the um, the prepaid debit debit card. Three quarters of the money we would usually spend, and we would use that money to save up to travel and it did work and it does work to this day to this day if we are traveling anywhere anywhere we stop about two months before the travel and look and see where the frivolity is um and nowadays because we're a family of four you can go to a hamburger stand and spend 60 dollars easy so if we do that two three times a week well that's 180 dollars. that's a decent amount of money for you to be able to put away and travel with. Now we're going to move over to my third point, and this is very, very, very key. Now, we all know that when you travel, or maybe you don't know, but when you travel you and you have a hotel, the hotel needs a deposit anywhere from 100 to I've seen some as much as 500. I'm not for the, you know, higher up four or five star hotels or more, depending or when you're traveling too. In addition, if you're going to rent a car, the rent a car company needs a deposit as well. That can be anywhere from 200 to 400 to 500, depending on who you rent with and what you rent. If you're going to rent a car, go get a hotel room, whatever, you need to have an account to have a deposit out of. We found that it's a lot easier if you do not use your primary account for all of those deposits. And the reason why is that when you use your primary account, you have deposit after deposit, incidental hold, as they wanna call them, incidental hold after incidental hold had on, uh, held on your account. And those funds are not available for you to enjoy yourself on your trip. Um, if you just take one hotel and one car rental, that can be upwards of $700 just sitting in your account untouchable because you can't touch it. They've already placed a hold on it. So what we do is that we separate our, our expenses. We separate our expenses. We always keep, like I said, that one card that we were using to keep our, um, our frivolous spending on, that debit card. Well, what we will do is we will use the debit card for the item that needs the biggest deposit. So say maybe the hotel room deposit is more expensive than the car deposit. And so then we would put the hotel room on the prepaid card and then we would use our bank account as a deposit for the rental car. What that does is that leaves you more money in your bank account, your actual bank account, and you don't have to necessarily worry about, you know, Kim coming too close with taking too much money out because the money you saved is on a prepaid card and that has been designated towards maybe your whole, your biggest purchase, right? Quick tip. Bonus tip, actually, when it comes to determining your hotel or your biggest purchase, if you know how much your, I'm gonna put it like this. If you know how much your hotel is and you book your, you're looking at hotels six months in advance, then you know how much you need to put on that card. You know the deposit amount and you know the total amount for the room. So it is an easy way for you to save the money up for just one part of your trip. Now, if you know you're going to eat like you normally eat at home, well, you already have that information because you look through your frivolous spending and you know how much it costs, okay? So these are the three strategies that we use every time we travel. I'm not saying just once. I mean, every time we travel, if any of this has been helpful to you, go ahead and put a comment in, in the video below about how it's helped you or maybe it's, you know, 
uh, giving you a light bulb or aha moment, that would be great. Um, also, let me know where you would like to travel to. What's your dream destination?